Hello, welcome to Quack Hello. Thank you for being here. Today we're bringing you a right free, wrong free review on Ten Penny Parks. By Thunderworks Games. Now, this is a game we picked up at Gen Con. The yep. publisher did give us a copy of this. We've been interested in it in a while, and we've kind of been on a polyomino sprint recently. Yes, we have. If you've seen any of our other right free reviews, Actually, they've all been polyomino games. Polyominoes. Yep, exactly. When we do a comparison of other games to compare this to, we're going to talk about all of the other games. Can we just take this season and end it by doing a top 10 polyomino game series? Because I think we've at least got 20 or 25 that we've played through Probably. in the last few months. All right, listen, we're a little biased. We like Polyomino, but this game has some things that make it maybe not quite your classic Polyomino game. It breaks some rules in some interesting ways, so I'm excited to tell you about them. This video series is a series where we examine a game in seven different categories, trying to determine whether or not it's going to be a game you want to add to your shelf. Those for categories you, are... For you. you do the categories better. Those categories are, we're going to talk about the game, we're going to give you an overview of it, we're going to talk about the theme, we're going to talk about the accessibility, we're going to talk about the gameplay, then we're going to talk about the modes of play, we're going to talk about the innovation, whether or not it is or isn't, and then finally... We're going to eat the price! <laughs> We're going to eat the price. And at the very end of this, we'll give you our personal opinion as to whether or not this was a game that's going to stay in our collection, on our shelf. We'll give you the verdict. So, Shira, yes. what is the overview of Ten Penny Parks? What's happening here? This is a polyomino point scoring worker placement private objective game where you are trying to have make the best amusement park, essentially, and you are going to try and have the most victory points at the end of the game, money is just a tool that you use throughout the game, but your main objective are always. those points. I need more tools. Yes, you do. Please. Um, essentially, you're going to be placing out your workers on different locations on the board. You're going to either purchasing attractions to put into your park. You are going to be going to the bank for money. You're going. You can go to the realtor for extra land. You can go to the arborist to cut down some of the trees to make room in your park, or you can go up to the contractor and get some of these little concession stands that will give you a little perks. There's going to be these two, three tracks at the bottom that you're going to be trying to go up. They're kind of your attraction. Thrill! Yes. Oh, enjoy. Yes. You will get bonuses um, at the end of each of the five rounds, depending on how far you make it up, and there's also going to be end game points with them at the end of the game. Yeah, they also have asymmetric player match, which means every time you play, you can have a different puzzle you're trying to solve for, and with some of the end game scoring and the private objectives you have, you'll never quite have the same way you have to approach your polyomino placements. One core thing they do different yes. from other polyomino games... Which is something that I'm finding you don't enjoy. I, uh, yeah, so far we've seen... This has seen been a, your problem with a couple of these games. We've seen a few games that have elements that feel similar to this. Uh, yeah. One of them was a game called Wild Pile West, yep. and it had a very open build theme. It yes. wasn't quite this rule, though. This rule, very specifically, is your pieces... Cannot touch each other. They can't touch... They, 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 look at my board. Yes. They, they can be linked by corners diagonally, but the pieces actually cannot have sides that go up yeah. against each other, which makes it more of a creative build because you're also building around your trees unless you should choose to cut them down, and you're building around the pieces. So if it, the right piece doesn't come up, then it might not fit your part. It also means that future planning becomes really critical here because you've got to be able to space where and how you're going to build your pieces. And with a limited amount of shapes based on the cards that are available and other people purchasing those cards and revealing other new potential shapes and definitely not making it through all of them throughout the course of the gameplay, you will find some core mo moments where you're having to change your plans because what you want to build either doesn't fit or is no longer available. So, if you're looking for a game that integrates worker placement, point scoring, and polyomino puzzles all in one contraption with a unique polyomino rule that makes it different from how other games play and approach it and is lightweight enough that you get it to the table with most of your family or friends. This game might be right for you. It might be right for you, but let's see if theme can be the game changer. Theme is your category. What did you think about theme? Theme is my category. So, the, I mean, the artwork here is rich and beautiful. The rules of the game actually match very well. They've done a lot of things to create thematic overtones. You're building out an amusement park. It reminds me a lot of something like uh, amusement park roller coaster tycoon, where you're yeah. placing down pieces. You're trying to get people to come. It is a limited, scaled down version of that. You have three metrics that you're judging your park by. You're trying to get as many people uh, uh, visiting pedestrians. 
victory points. Yes. You're trying visiting to get as, you're trying to get as yes. many visiting pedestrians as you can by the end of the game. I think that even works for me. I love little nods to what the actual thematic un like understructure of a game is. Even though at the end of the day it is like a worker placement point scoring Euro style game. There's a lot of like open information. There's not a lot of stuff concealed or hidden other than your own personal objective. Yep. Uh, I think the one thing that bugged me when it came to the theme, I actually like the fact that the polyomino keeps the spaces open because you would have to build in an amusement park with room between your park pieces. Mm -hmm. I wish there was a, a, an expansion or something that gave me uh, infrastructure, like beauty, beautying elements that I could add to the park as well. Like water fountains let and me, trees. Let me put down things between them. Water fountains, yeah. trees. Let me put in uh, pathways and, and, and stuff. You do have trees. And stuff that I actually had, like one of my games, I left all the trees on the board that I could because I was trying to make my park beautiful. I'd love to see a mini expansion here that lets me fill in the gaps a little yeah. bit tighter and scores based on how and where you actually fill those gaps in depending on what they're adjacent to. Interesting. Concession stands, the type of ride, something like that. I'd love to see the game expand so that this felt like I was building a park a little bit more. But I have to say, the theme, the style, the artwork, Everything here does feel like a scaled down version of Roller Coaster Tycoon. Yeah. I love visualizing and imagining what the rides are going to be like. And as someone who really loves going to amusement parks with you, I see some things here that I'm like, sure, and I would love to get on that ride. Yeah. Uh, so I think theme for what it is, is actually done really well in this game. So if you're looking for a game that pulls in overtures of uh, amusement parks and roller coaster buildings and fun rides and creative days outside, but it's a rainy, soggy day and you can't go to the amusement park, this might be right for you. a game that you should get off the shelf mm -hmm. and onto your table. Let's talk about accessibility. You touched on that, and I believe that you are correct, that this accessibility is pretty standard for a family weight style game. Sure. You can get it up to the table with, I would feel, anywhere, any, any kid greater than eight years old, and I think they would have it's a one really to four players. good time. Yeah, you can play, well, that's over modes of play. I was saying, it, it, but it's one to four players, plays in like yeah. 45 minutes. It's yeah. not too heavy. No, it's not too heavy. The main restrictions are fitting your pieces around the trees, but if you go to the arborist, you can always knock down the trees and clear up some room and that makes it less restrictive in a way but you are using a worker so i think there are tactical decision makings in play but i don't think it's too excessive yeah i, I think it's also a, a game that can get off the shelf and onto the table very easily i think in terms of the the teach time maybe five to eight minutes depending on how fast the people that you're playing with are at picking up the undertones of the game uh, this really is one that if you if you pull it off the shelf and you're like let's play 10 penny parks now that i know it now that we've played it a few times I wouldn't hesitate. I wouldn't think to myself, like, oh, I don't want to relearn it. I, mm -hmm. I, like, I could sit down probably a month from now and be pretty much ready to go. It's it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy to run. Yep. Um, so, if you're looking for a game that really could be played with anyone that gets a little bit more strategic with more players, but is hyper accessible for a family-targeted uh, audience, which I think is where this game's sweet spot is, anywhere in the range of, like, 14 years and up. Uh, 14? I, well, that's what it says in the box. <laughs> I was saying eight. 14 years. I don't know I'm kids. How smart is your eight-year-old? Pretty smart. Smart eight-year-olds or average 14-year-olds. <laughs> you can get this game to the table. This game might be right for you. Let's talk about the actual gameplay and not how to play. Yeah. But what about the gameplay either makes it right for you or wrong for you? So this is a worker placement. You are going to have a couple of different worker placement zones. Like I said, you have the arborist, you have the contractor, you have the realtor, you have the banker. Anyone can, as many people as they want can go to these slots. They are not blocked out. But the other I once saw a game where 17 people went to the arborist. I'm sure you did. It's impossible. Correct. Okay. Um, however, the worker placement slots that are restrictive are going to be the actual attractions. If you look at the rondelle, the rondelle spins between round to round and will tick down the price or increase the price based on whatever modifier is in front of it. And then you can place your worker on that and take the attraction. Another one will come up, but it won't be available that round because your worker is there. Then you're going to place it out onto your board. You are going to gain the bonuses. This is going to be three and three end game victory points. Uh, tick up on each of the three tracks. Thrill. Oh. 
enjoy. And then you're going to turn it over. And this is going to tell you how you can advertise because advertising is going to be the fourth step of the turn. So once you take your income for all of the available money symbols you have on your park, so the, the concession stands give you money, there's going to be some of the yellow buildings that will give you money as well. Once you take all of your income, then you're going to place out all three or four, depending on if you got the extra worker, four of your workers, then you're going to do the bonuses step which will take up all of these tracks and then you'll do the advertising. Advertising is where you can pay money once per attraction per each of the five rounds, $4 for three points. And that's how you mainly get victory points. You're yep. going to want to advertise in between every round and still save some money for that next round so that you can purchase more buildings. So does that make you right for you or wrong for you? Both. If you are... You're talking about the worker placement spots being limited, the rondelle spinning, like the way that you actually build your park. Is that a system that works well for you? It worked, it worked well for me. I did enjoy the constant not knowing if my price was going to go up or down by $2. $2 can make a big difference because your income can start out at the game only at 3 mm -hmm. Um, Some of these rides can get are pretty expensive. I like that the other zones aren't restrictive, so if you went to clear trees, I could still clear trees later on during the game, but I would go and grab the ride that I wanted first right off the bat. So I do like that hybrid of worker placements that are restrictive and not restrictive. I mean, most worker placement games have that, where there's some zones that Thanks. everyone can go to. I find it found it kind of frustrating that I couldn't get cards from an area, from a region, that I specifically wanted those type of buildings from. Uh, and the game, one of the things that for me is probably a negative, I think, is just how quick the game is. I, by the end of the game sessions I've had, I haven't felt like I really finished what I wanted to do. My park hasn't expanded as much as I wanted. I haven't built as many rides as I wanted to build because I'm having fun doing this construction thing. And then there's also the, oh, the game's ending and there's point scoring alongside that. Usually that's a good thing because it makes you want to sit down and play again and you can min-max your turns to get as much out of them as you want. And I did fill up my park almost every single game I had, so I think it ends appropriately, but it does feel a little quicker than I would prefer. Another thing for me that is just going to be one of those things I think I don't like about polyomino games, I, like I said, the you expansion... You want the type puzzle of the, like fitting things next to each other? You don't like having to leave space. The expansion I want is an expansion that fills in the holes in my board. I don't like the fact that I'm building across the diagonals as opposed to squeezing mm -hmm. things in the park together. I don't know why that doesn't work for me. I haven't figured that out. I have, yeah. to, you know, I have to go to a counselor or something to work out these details. But there's something about it where it doesn't feel like a complete polyomino puzzle if all I'm doing is spreading. And that doesn't make sense because it is a puzzle. It's got, you know, it's got its nature to it. Uh, it just doesn't quite work for me. I think at two, I've played this at higher player counts, and I think at two players, it is hard to cycle through some of these decks and see all of the attractions and see more of the pieces that might be more fitting sure. for you. I almost wish that in between rounds, you would go through and clear off any spot that did not have a worker on it. You would mm. take that attraction off, so that way you were getting through the decks quicker. With more players, there's more people going to the attractions cycles a little bit and more. cycles more. But you but also like have you more limited areas where you can actually purchase from. But I'm saying, yeah, like you were saying, like if you liked. If you, someone went here and took this piece and you actually like this piece, you wouldn't be able to get it until next round. You can't go through a whole stack. There's some private objectives that give you points for having like one of each color or a bunch, a yeah. bunch of different colors. Those are harder to complete like yeah. this. Um, another part of gameplay are these bonus tracks. The thrill, the awe, the joy. As you take up the tracks, the player who's ahead is going to have the option of either taking their spot back and on the joy track taking $3, on the awe track taking the first player token, or on the thrill track taking the extra meeple. And they all require you to bring back your um, token or you can leave your token where it's at and gain some victory points. Um, by just leaving it there because once you cross over this shaded area at the end of the game, each one that's across is going to be worth an additional five points. Um, so that is one area where you want to keep track of where your opponents are and what they're scoring. I found that I didn't try to get all three. Um, I let you consistently get one and then I think you let me get one and we kind of fought and went back and forth on one of them. You ended up having most of the joy. I ended up having the thrill. Yeah. All game, um, and we went back and forth on awe for first player. Yeah. 
So, if you're looking for a game that is quick to play, that has some interesting worker placement mechanics that are very similar to other worker placement games that you might like, a little bit of tightness when it comes to the market that you're buying from, but pretty open-ended when it comes to how you build out the infrastructure of your park and get resources in order to continue building, uh, but you're not concerned about the limited polyomino puzzle, the fact that you're not building polyomino pieces together, uh, and you're not concerned about the game potentially ending a little bit faster than what is maybe arguably satisfying. Then this might be right if for it you. It might still be right for you. Down to modes of play, how can this be played, and what do we think it plays best at or around? Solo and competitive. Um, solo is one player, and then it can play two to four players. I think it would shine at three and four players, more so than two. Two is fun, but when it comes to the two-player genre, I think there's other um, polyomino-style games that just do it would be better. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it's not one of those games where higher player counts makes your market a little bit more limited. Lower player counts means your market's moving a little bit less, but you have more freedom to get what you're trying to get. And then Solo is ultimately a point scoring, point salad style puzzle with a little bit of, uh, you know, competition in there. I, I in my boat, I think, I think it all plays very nicely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I haven't played it up at four players. Uh, I'd be interested to see. I feel like I'd feel like the board was a little bit more squeezed than I'd like, and you run the risk of having people, when it comes to games like this that require spatial reasoning, of having a bit too much AP for my satisfaction. Okay. Yep. At two players, I felt like I was pretty constantly taking my turn and moving back and forth. Like you said, it plays quickly. And it played very quickly at lower player counts. I liked it at two. Um, yeah. I would certainly play it higher. I don't know that I'm overly interested in it solo. Um, it might still be one that I, I give a shot uh, at that solo player count. Um, but I've glanced through the rules, and it, it seems like it would feel feel similar to sitting down and playing with you. Yeah. So, uh, modes of play. If you're looking for a solo game, it's a polyomino, uh, kind of beat-your-own-score style thing, this might be a good option. That can also be played competitively, two to four players. That uh, this might be right for you. And then, depending on the other categories that we've talked about, Get it? I don't know. You, you know you you know your stuff. You're listening. Innovation. Is this innovative? If so, how? If not, does, does it, it matter? matter? I... This might be innovative. That might be innovative? Uh, something that ticks down? You it's just like cool the components. folded cardboard that makes a little umbrella up to go on the center of your board. It's <laughs> awesome. You just like the 3D piece? Yep. Okay, fine. But the, the rundown <laughs> that ticks around and modifies no. the price, that's not... I don't think that... I've seen that before. That's not innovative. I don't think there is anything innovative here per se, but I think the cohesiveness and how everything kind of comes together. What you're doing actually matters on all aspects of the board. The things, the the tiles that you are getting allow you to go up on the tracks. The tracks allow you to get bonuses and income, and the other locations allow you to do things that modify your board. I think it all fits cohesively together. Yeah, nothing feels directly new or directly stand out uh, about the, the game. That being said, like you like you pointed out, it's tied together well. It's easy to teach because nothing is directly uh, kind of game-breaking when it comes to rules and how you have to work your mind around it. Um, so I wouldn't call it innovative, but I don't think it matters. For people that like this genre, that love the artwork, that like the components, which are very, very nice, uh, and are excited about getting another polyomino game that they can play with their family, Family, yeah. Still one that should be on their radar. Okay, finally, the price point. Have we looked at the price point? We looked at the price point. And just these. Hey. Price point is going to be $56 up on Amazon. Okay. There are going to be some secondhand markets that are slightly cheaper, um, and there are some sales currently going on that I noticed for like, we'll take it down to $40. Okay. Um, what do you think of the price? At $55, $56 uh, on Amazon, which means you're probably getting free shipping alongside that. The components are very nice for what you're getting. I think the game has beautiful artwork. I think it's displayed well. We've got wooden meeples that we're using in nice little trees. The punch board is really good. Punch board's very thick. I I don't think it's not worth $45. Or I don't think it's 56. not worth $55. That being said, I am much more interested in picking this game up at $40 for the gameplay specifically. You lessen the production quality a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. and you tell me you got a $40 game that, uh, you know, has a nice artwork, maybe doesn't have this piece in the center, maybe is using, you know, smaller meeples, not going as big with the wood, doing like little paper things for the trees. Um, you know, I, I think I think hovering around that $40 price point, this is a good buy. I think you get up to the 56, uh, you know, it's not, it's not a bad buy, 
but you're getting a little high. I think $45 to $50 is appropriate for the game. $56 is maybe a little slightly on the higher end and a little bit less if you can snatch it on a sale. I think this is a good purchase for that. Yeah. So there's some good options out there to grab it. If you want free shipping to get it tomorrow so you can play it immediately, $56 seems like a good deal. If you're willing to pay shipping and you want to buy it for $40 plus $12 shipping and tax, <laughs> uh, you can get it for $52. Um, overall, we think the price point might be a little high because of the production quality that's in the box compared to the gameplay that we've experienced yeah. so far. However, if it's the right game for you, I don't think that extra $10, $15 here or there really is going to be the game changer when it comes to Tenpenny Parks. Okay, moving on down Verdict. to our... Verdict. And comparable games. Was this game... Well, comparable games. Oh, comparable games. But we didn't tell them we were going to talk about that. But I'm telling them we're going to talk about it. What games would you compare this to? It, Wild Hell West is one of the yes. new ones that pops into my mind. Because of the spatial pattern that you're building, yeah. it's more... This is actually tighter than Wild Hell West was. I... And I think the, I think the I price was... point and production quality is actually hovering right around the same area. Yeah. Um, I think thematically, it was reminding me a little bit more of Baron Park. Okay, yeah. Um, and then, not thematically, but component-wise, I like these components, and that was reminding me a little bit of Planet Unknown. Planet Unknown sure. has really great polyominoes. Um, the shapes being different in each type of color. Um, that was reminding me of another comparable game. Is there anything else that we kind of... I mean, there's Foundations of Rome, yes. there's My City, yeah. there's My Island. Yeah, but there's none a of those lot feel of like... Polyomino. Those are all polyomino. Feast that's for, for Odin, sure. which is going to be a Euro-style worker placement polyomino game. So there's some options out there but that... But in the family weight style genre, those start to get a little bit more heavier. Yeah, yeah. yeah I do think Planet Unknown is taking a step away from where this game is when it comes to the family weight. I think I think Wild Pile West, I think My City... Uh, I think Baron Park. I think Baron Park. Those are going to be hovering there. I think Baron Park is going to have this beat. It's the classic polyomino yeah. style game. You're building out a zoo. Uh, it's really lovely. If you haven't played Baron Park, I don't know how I could not recommend that. That being said, if you've played, enjoyed, and loved Baron Park in your collection, you want something that's a little bit different, I don't think this is a bad addition right. to a household that likes polyomino games. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to compare, you know, comparing it to some of the newer titles that come out, Wild Tile West pops to mind. It's one that yeah. we just recently reviewed. I have to be honest, I think I prefer this over Wild Hell West. West. Interesting. I think I prefer Wild Hell West solo mode, though, because of how crunchy some of the actual positions yeah. are compared to this. So I don't know where you are on, on some of those, like My City uh, or Baron Park. In terms of which one I would want to grab off the table if I was having a polyamino day, I would grab Tenpenny Parks before Wild Hell West. But there's some parts of Wild Tile West that I liked better. I think that the variability from Wild Tile West is going to exceed the variability sure. here. Sure. Um, I think between all of that, there's like eight boards and all of them are double-sided. One's the same side, but the other side is all asymmetric. Um, but we also had some criticisms yeah. of Wild Tile West. We've got a review for that. You yep. can go check that out <laughs> as well. So our verdict, was this right for us or not? And I think we're going to be split on this one. Yeah. I want to hear what you have to say. This is right for me. Oh, okay. Why? I, I'm, I, I'll say my piece in a second. This is right for me. I, I enjoy the polyamino thing. It was one that I've played a while back a couple times, and then I was really looking forward to picking it up. I was the one who kind of spurred that at Gen Con, and I was really happy to bring it home. I like the component quality. I like the fast time in place. I like that it can play at two players well. I like that we can also bring it out when we have some friends, and it there doesn't seem to be a lot of downtime. It was It was right for me. Despite all my criticisms, yes, I think this one, at the moment, is also right for me. Good. It's a right-ish. It's not, it's not heavy on there. I think after maybe a dozen more plays, it might fade off. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know that it lasts forever. But I do find myself, and I found myself as we've had this set up ready to like sit here and film this video, wanting to sit down and give it a few more swings. I've wanted to play with you again. Yeah. I might check out the solo mode. I wouldn't be opposed if we're having a game night trying to get three or four games to the table with a group of friends for this one to hit the table with a group of, you know, four people. Yeah. Um, it just fits that category very well. And i got to be honest, in the field of polyomino, in the field of family weight polyomino, this is definitely a contender for one that I'd pull off the shelf more regularly than others. Things like Planet Unknown require a heavier teach. Things like mm -hmm. Foundation of Rome are just sort of ostentatious. And while they're beautiful, can be a yeah. little intimidating. Something like Feast for Odin, which is probably my favorite polyomino game, 
which you haven't played, I don't believe. I don't believe I have. That's one of those. It's just, it's just way too big. It's like a you know, it's like a thirty forty five minute teach. Yeah. And so when I'm thinking polyomino, ten penny parks, I think is there in the conversation. Yeah. So for us, this was right for us. Yes. For now. Whatever the case, though. Whatever you do, remember to do. Let us know things. down below. Is it right for you? What are some other polyaminos? Because don't ask can't. them that. We're yes. gonna buy them. We're no, on a stop kick. It. We are on a polyamino kick. Let me know what other polyaminos we should be we trying. We don't need to know more polyaminos. More polyaminos. There's 17, and we already have them covered. No. Nope. Whatever the case, whatever you do. Remember to do the important thing. Bite a llama. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye.